What if I told you that medieval people had air conditioning that was more effective than your expensive modern system, and it never broke down or required electricity? You probably think I'm crazy, right? Well, prepare to have everything you know about medieval life completely shattered. While you're paying hundreds of dollars every month to keep your home cool and dealing with AC units that sound like jet engines, People 800 years ago were living in perfectly climate-controlled comfort, using nothing but stone, water, and pure genius. Picture this, it's the scorching summer of 1347, and you're trapped inside a stone castle where the walls feel like they're radiating heat from hell itself. Medieval folks were literally fighting for their lives against temperatures that could kill. Unlike our modern solutions that work with the flip of a switch, medieval people had to get creative or risk becoming another casualty of nature's wrath. The medieval world wasn't equipped with thermostats or cooling systems, but man, did they understand the art of survival. When summer hit those thick stone walls, people would literally faint from the oppressive temperatures, and sleeping became a nightmare when your bed felt like it was on fire. What's absolutely mind-blowing is how they turned their biggest enemy, the very architecture that trapped heat, into their greatest ally, those massive stone walls that seemed like a curse during summer. Well, they discovered something that would make any modern HVAC engineer jealous they realized that the same stones cooking them alive could actually become the foundation of their cooling. Salvation, that the desperation for relief, wasn't just about comfort, it was about survival, productivity, and maintaining sanity during those brutal summer months. Imagine trying to forge weapons, prepare food, or defend your territory when you're constantly battling heat exhaustion. They couldn't just hop in a car and drive to a cooler climate or crank up the AC while we've become dependent on electricity and complex machinery. These medieval innovators created cooling systems using nothing but physics, creativity, and sheer determination. Their methods weren't just effective, they were sustainable, environmentally friendly, and required zero fossil fuels. But here's where it gets really interesting. Let's discover the brilliant engineering tricks they used to turn their buildings into natural refrigerators. Medieval people basically invented the world's first passive cooling system, and it didn't require a single kilowatt of electricity. Their air conditioner was pure genius, disguised as simple architecture. While we rely on complex refrigeration cycles and energy-guzzling compressors, they used something called the stack effect, combined with strategic water placement. Picture this. They'd position water basins in specific locations where cool air would naturally flow, creating an evaporation system that dropped temperatures by up to 20 degrees. Fahrenheit. The secret weapon was their understanding of thermal dynamics that would make modern physicists weep with envy. They discovered that by creating temperature differentials between different levels of their buildings, they could generate powerful air currents without any mechanical assistance. Hot air would rise through carefully designed shafts, while cool air was drawn in from lower, shadier areas, creating a natural circulation system that worked 24 7 It's like having a central air system, powered entirely by the laws of physics. And honestly, it's more reliable than half the HVAC units breaking down in modern homes today. But wait, it gets even more ingenious. They incorporated what we now call thermal mass cooling, using thick stone walls and underground chambers. During the night, these massive stones would absorb the cool air and release it slowly throughout the scorching day, acting like a giant battery storing coolness instead of electricity. They'd also use wind catchers and strategically placed openings to channel breezes through their living spaces, creating cross ventilation that would make any modern architect jealous. The whole system worked in perfect harmony, like a medieval symphony of cooling comfort. What really blows my mind is how they combined evaporation, convection, and thermal mass into one integrated system without a single manual or YouTube tutorial. They'd hang wet cloth in specific areas where air would flow, creating instant cooling as water evaporated and absorbed heat from the surrounding air. Some castles even had sophisticated underground cooling chambers connected to natural springs, where cold water would flow through channels built into the floor, cooling the entire structure from below. Talk about underfloor cooling, they invented it centuries before we did. The most brilliant part, this entire air conditioning system was completely silent, eco-friendly, and self-maintaining. Unlike our modern units that sound like jet engines and drain our wallets every month, their cooling technology was so effective that some of these medieval buildings still maintain comfortable temperatures today, centuries later, without any modern intervention. And if you're absolutely loving these mind-blowing medieval secrets, make sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe because we're just getting started, trust me. You don't want to miss what's coming next about how they engineered their buildings to work with nature instead of against it. Here's something that'll absolutely blow your mind.
Medieval architects were basically environmental engineers who could design buildings that breathed like living organisms, and they did it without a single computer simulation. While modern buildings are sealed boxes that fight against nature, medieval structures were designed to work in perfect harmony with natural airflow patterns. They understood something that we've somehow forgotten. Buildings should breathe, not suffocate their inhabitants. These ancient engineers created ventilation systems so sophisticated that they could maintain comfortable temperatures year-round. Using nothing but clever design and the power of physics. The genius was in their understanding of pressure, differentials, and thermal stratification. Concepts that modern HVAC engineers spend years studying in university. They'd strategically place windows, doors, and openings at specific heights and orientations to create natural air highways throughout their buildings. Hot air would naturally rise through tall chambers and escape through carefully positioned vents while cool air was drawn in from shaded areas near the ground. It's like they turned their entire building into one massive lung, constantly inhaling cool air and exhaling hot air without any mechanical assistance whatsoever. But here's where it gets really impressive. They incorporated what we now call stack ventilation by building tall towers and chimneys that acted like natural air pumps. The taller the structure, the stronger the updraft, creating a vacuum effect that would suck fresh air through the lower levels of the building. Some castles had ventilation shafts that were over 100 feet tall, creating airflow so powerful it could cool an entire great hall filled with hundreds of people. Compare that to our modern buildings where we need massive fans and ductwork to move air around, they just let physics do all the work. Medieval builders also mastered something called cross-ventilation by positioning openings on opposite sides of rooms to create air tunnels that would flush out hot, stale air and replace it with fresh, cool breezes. They'd even angle these openings to catch prevailing winds, turning their buildings into giant wind-catching machines. Some structures had complex systems of interconnected chambers that would create air circulation patterns so efficient that every room stayed comfortable, even during the hottest summer days. It's like having a whole house fan system that runs completely silent and never breaks. Down what's absolutely mind-boggling is how they integrated thermal chimneys, wind towers, and underground cooling chambers into one seamless ventilation network that worked automatically 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. They even understood how to use the thermal mass of stone walls to create delayed cooling effects, where buildings would stay cool during the day by releasing the coolness they'd absorbed during the night. These weren't just buildings, they were sophisticated climate control machines disguised as architecture. And wait until you discover how effective these medieval systems actually were compared to our modern cooling methods. Get ready to have your mind completely blown. Medieval cooling systems were not only more effective than you'd expect, they were actually more efficient than many of our modern solutions. While we pump thousands of watts of electricity through energy-hungry air conditioners that break down every few years, medieval buildings maintained comfortable temperatures for centuries without a single repair bill or electrical breakdown. Studies have shown that some well-designed medieval structures could maintain indoor temperatures, 15 to 20 degrees cooler than outside temperatures, rivaling the performance of modern HVAC systems that cost thousands of dollars to install and maintain. Here's what's absolutely crazy. Our modern air conditioners work by fighting against nature, consuming massive amounts of energy to force cool air where it doesn't want to go. While medieval systems worked WITH natural forces, making them incredibly reliable and sustainable. A typical modern cooling system uses about 3,500 watts of electricity per hour and can cost hundreds of dollars monthly to operate. But medieval cooling was completely free and never stopped working. Plus, when was the last time your AC unit lasted 800 years without maintenance? These medieval buildings are still cooling people today while we're replacing our modern units every 10 to 15 years. But here's the real kicker. Medieval systems provided something our modern air conditioning can't. Healthy air circulation that prevented the spread of diseases and maintained proper humidity levels naturally. While modern sealed buildings can become breeding grounds for bacteria and require expensive air purification systems, medieval ventilation constantly brought in fresh outdoor air, filtered naturally through stone and vegetation. 
They achieved what we call mechanical ventilation without any machines, creating airflow patterns that were actually healthier than the recycled air we breathe in modern climate-controlled buildings. The effectiveness comparison gets even more shocking when you consider comfort levels. Medieval cooling systems provided gentle, consistent temperature regulation without the harsh temperature swings and dry air that modern AC units create. While we blast freezing air that makes us uncomfortable and sick, their systems created subtle temperature gradients that felt natural and comfortable to the human body. Many people who've lived in restored medieval buildings report feeling more comfortable and sleeping better than in modern. Air-conditioned homes, despite technically inferior technology, what's truly mind-blowing is that some medieval cooling techniques are now being rediscovered and implemented in cutting-edge green buildings because they're so much more efficient and sustainable than our current methods. Modern architects are literally studying 800-year-old buildings to learn how to design better cooling systems, proving that sometimes the old ways really were the best ways. These ancient engineers achieved something we're still struggling with today, perfect climate control that works in harmony with the environment rather than against it. And the legacy of these thermal solutions holds lessons that could revolutionize how we think about cooling our modern world. Here's something that'll absolutely change how you see the future of cooling. Modern green building architects are literally going back to school, studying medieval manuscripts and measuring 800-year-old buildings to learn cooling secrets that we somehow forgot. Major architectural firms are now incorporating medieval principles into billion-dollar projects because these ancient techniques are proving to be more sustainable, cost-effective, and reliable than our high-tech solutions. It's like discovering that your great-great-grandmother's recipe was better than anything you could buy in a fancy restaurant. Except this recipe could solve our global energy crisis. The most incredible part is how medieval thermal solutions are inspiring the next generation of sustainable architecture. With techniques like thermal mass cooling, natural ventilation, and passive solar design becoming the gold standard for environmentally conscious buildings. Modern engineers are rediscovering that working with nature's forces instead of against them isn't just more efficient, it's actually more effective at keeping people comfortable. Some of the world's most advanced smart buildings are now using principles that medieval builders mastered centuries ago, proving that true innovation sometimes means looking backward to move forward. What's absolutely fascinating is how these ancient cooling methods are being adapted for modern homes offices, and even skyscrapers using contemporary materials but following medieval airflow principles. Architects are designing breathing buildings that use stack ventilation, thermal chimneys, and strategic thermal mass placement to reduce energy consumption by up to 90% compared to traditional HVAC systems. It's like taking the best of medieval engineering and supercharging it with modern materials and precision manufacturing, creating cooling systems that are both ancient and futuristic at the same time. The legacy extends beyond just buildings. Medieval cooling principles are influencing everything from urban planning to climate change solutions, showing us how entire cities could be designed to stay naturally cool without massive energy consumption. Some cities are now implementing medieval cooling corridors using strategic placement of water features, vegetation, and airflow channels to create urban microclimates that reduce the need for artificial cooling. These techniques aren't just saving energy, they're creating healthier, more livable communities that work in harmony with natural climate patterns. Perhaps the most important lesson from medieval thermal solutions is that true. Innovation doesn't always require more technology. Sometimes it requires better understanding of the natural forces that surround us every day. As we face rising energy costs and environmental challenges, these ancient cooling methods offer a blueprint for a more sustainable future where comfort and efficiency don't have to come at the expense of the planet. The medieval masters proved that the most elegant solutions are often the simplest ones, and their thermal legacy continues to cool our world in ways they never could have imagined. So there you have it. Medieval people weren't just surviving the heat, they were absolutely crushing it with cooling technology that puts our energy-hungry systems to shame. But wait, I'm curious. Which medieval cooling technique shocked you the most? Was it the stack ventilation that worked like a natural air pump, or maybe the thermal mass cooling that stored coolness like a battery? Before you answer that, make sure you've smashed that like button if this video absolutely blew your mind. And hit that subscribe button, because we're diving deep into medieval secrets that'll change everything you thought you knew. Now drop a comment below 
and let me know what shocked you the most, because I absolutely love hearing your thoughts on these incredible historical discoveries. And speaking of discoveries, that'll make you question everything. You definitely don't want to miss our latest exploration into medieval warfare technology. If you thought their cooling systems were impressive, wait until you see what happens when we pit medieval shields against modern bullets, the results will absolutely shock you. So make sure those notifications are turned. Oh, and because we're just getting started with these mind-blowing historical revelations. Trust me, there are so many more medieval secrets that'll change how you see the past and the future, and you won't want to miss a single one.